How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar. Today, we're going to test out two of the most popular brands of 100 watt panels. Closer to me, we have EcoWorthy's 100 watt panel and then Renogy's on the far side. Additionally, I did get your feedback and we'll add some additional testing, including a pretty interesting durability test to this round of testing to get you guys the information you need to make the smart decisions on your own DIY solar setup. So let's jump into it. So kicking off the day, the first trial, and it's looking like a glorious day for some solar. We have a sun's out and the skies are clear. Now these 100 watt panels are sized to produce 100 watt under standard test conditions. What does that mean? That means an irradiance of 1000 watts per meter squared and also a temperature, the actual panel temperature, not necessarily just the outside temperature of 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 25 degrees Celsius. So I have this fluke meter here. And remember, we're just getting started. These panels are facing south. And what we're seeing is our irradiance is at 700 watts per meter squared. And the panel temperature is heating up but we're under 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So right at standard test conditions for the temperature. So the panel is not degrading much, but because the sun is still lower in the sky, we're not up to our full irradiance. And I would expect that to go up substantially and we'll take multiple more points throughout the day, but let's see what that's bringing in in terms of power in our Delta two and Delta three units. So just plug things in on the eco worthy for this side. And we're using these little power meters to get our voltage and amperage, but also in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see the watt hours. Those will accumulate up throughout the day. And that's really how we're going to compare. We can do spot checks here on the power. So we're right at about 65 watts, but we really want to accumulate up the energy throughout the day. So if any clouds move in or just conditions change, it's going to be the same side to side. So the EcoWorthy is going to be going through the same thing as the Renogy. So then we got the Renogy over here right before 10 a.m. So we're not going to be producing the most we're going to see throughout the day. Hopefully we'll get these guys up to 100 watts, but looks like Renogy is around the 75 and you can see the voltage and amperage difference. And again, lower left-hand corner, that scrolls through. There's our amp hours. And then ultimately we'll be comparing the watt hours. So we just finished up the morning side of the testing and now I'm moving on to the afternoon. And then both of those will be about two hours each, two to two and a half hours. Now let's look at basic dimensions and a few other attributes for these panels. We have the EcoWorthy here. That's gonna be 23 and an eighth of an inch wide and 35 and three quarters in length with a overall area of 827 square inches, and that is 12.2 pounds. Comparing that to Renogy, Renogy is 20 and 7 eighths, and then an overall length much longer at 41 and 7 eighths, total area of 874 square inches. So Renogy is gonna be the panel with the larger surface area. We'd expect a little bit more power output and then 13.8 pounds. But let's go ahead and turn these around. So this one's our Eco-worthy. We popped off the cover. It is IP65 rated. We have our soldered connections up top, the two diodes between the three sections here. And then we have our positive and negatives crimped and soldered on the bottom. So now let's take a look at the spec plate. So the critical parameters you'd be looking for to design your system, we have our open circuit voltage at 22.7 volts, short circuit current at 5.55 amps. And then for a maximum power point, that'd be more like a 19.5 volts and a current of 5.13 amps. Now I'll put all this information together in a table at the end of the video and I'll compare it to all the other 100 watt panels we've tested. So now we have the Renogy cover plate off, also IP65 rated, soldered connections up top, just like the Eco-worthy two diodes. And then we just have crimped, not crimped and soldered. So some more people were arguing that crimps better than solder. Now crimped and solder I'd say would be superior, but a properly crimped connection should have no problem and hold up to vibration over time. Then look in our specs plate here, open circuit voltage for Renogy 24.3 short circuit current. 5.21 and then our maximum power point for voltage would be more like 20.4 and a maximum power point uh, current would be 4.91. Now the only other thing I'll say from a design perspective, I do like the Renji has these small plastic caps in the corner. I think that'll help for durability, opposed just your analyzed aluminum rails with a miter cut, which is more common for some of the different panels you'll see. Also, 
the lead length, the wire lead length is much shorter on the Renogy than compared to the Eco-worthy. So depending on how you're wiring these up, you might have to make small pigtails to extend out this and put your panels in series or parallel while Eco-worthy with this extra length, you wouldn't. Now we'll roll everything up into tables and the one thing I will put in there is the wire length, the wire lead length, and that'll be measured from the end of the MC4 up to this connector here, and then you'll be able to compare those from brand to brand. So just finishing up the testing now for our second of the two trials throughout the day, and we are getting some interesting results. There's definitely a gap between these two, and I've rolled that up into a table. I think that table is gonna be super valuable for you guys, and we'll also make it so you can download it, because depending on when you watch this, I'll include pricing, pricing might change, so it'd be good for you guys to be able to change that, and then that will help you with your purchase decisions. But also, I've been thinking through durability tests, and we always talk about hail when it comes to solar panels. So I wanted to figure out how the heck can I actually replicate a massive, like baseball-sized, hailstone hitting the panels to see if it has any damage. So what I ended up doing is taking these massive like cocktail ice cubes, 2.5 inches in diameter, and I froze those in the freezer. And then I took a little league pitching machine that maxes out at about 55 miles per hour. I only had six of these ice cubes, so I had to be pretty accurate and got two test throws that actually missed the target. So then we just went right into it with the third ice cube and was able to hit the Eco-Worthy on the lower portion of the panel. The second try on the Eco-Worthy, we also hit the panel. And then for the Renogy, we had two direct hits as well. So what I wanted to do, obviously inspect the panels and they look perfect. These things are insanely durable that they can take a hit like that. So no visible damage was done, but what about how they perform? So I took the Eco-Worthy and the Renogy and I swapped them out. I saw what was each of the brand new panels that we were testing at the end of the testing for the day, what do they produce? Then I swapped it out with the panels that just got hit with two chunks of ice to see if there's any difference and there wasn't. They are still producing the same amount of power for the Eco-Worthy and the Renogy, so no damage was done, and I would say both of these guys passed with flying color. But give me some feedback. What else do you think we should do in terms of a durability test on these solar panels? I want to kind of get that standard testing procedure put together that gives you guys the most benefit to help you make an educated decision for your own project. So now let's jump in and take a look at the results. So 100 watt panels, as you probably know, are super flexible. The amount of projects that they actually can come in handy for is very wide, but it does not stretch all the way up into offsetting your home's energy consumption. To do that, we're looking at more like 400 watt panels and most likely a professionally installed system. If you wanna start where I started, there's a link in the description and with a little details on your home and your monthly power bill, within minutes you can see what size of system would I need and how much roughly would that cost. If that's within the ballpark of what you're looking for, they can even connect you with installers in your area and you can start vetting those installers to see what is the right partner for you going forward. Now, I also did a project that saved me a ton of money because I took on the later burn. I did a DIY project with a company called Project Solar. They helped me with the designs, the engineering prints, pulling the permits, sent me all the materials. Then I went to work, documented that whole process, and then we got it inspected and got our permission to operate. That allowed me to lower my dollars per watt to get my monthly power bill offset. So that link is also in the description if either of those two paths are in your near future. So let's start looking at these results. And I also brought in our other panels that we just tested last week. So we brought in the Thunderbolt from Harbor Freight and Rich Solar. And I also included what you guys asked for. So this exact spreadsheet will be downloadable. There is a link in the description along with all the other links for the panels, the exact panels that we're using here but the Renogy and the Eco-Worthy is what we actually tested today. I brought in the prices over the last 12 months, the low, the high, and then the average price. The average price is what we're using for some of our calculations. And then this average power in watts is actually what we measured. There is another tab down here in the spreadsheet. And in that tab is all the detail on the testing. So we have what orientation we are facing south, what was the actual angle, tilt angle of our solar panels, and then we have test one and test two. 
how long was that test, and what did we measure in terms of energy that we were able to put into the EcoFlow Delta II and the Delta III. Then that gives us our average power. So that is where I took my morning session, which is test one, and my afternoon session, which is test two, and I averaged those together. I additionally, for Renogy and Ecoworthy, have irradiance at start and finish, and also panel temperature. I did not get those for Rich Solar and for the Thunderbolt, but I will add those later on as we're gonna continue to do more and more tests. So going back to our resultant table, we can actually start to compare apples to apples. So what we wanna do is we see the average power. Now the Renogy had great results. So it averaged out 96.2 watts across the over four hours of testing. That is amazing for a 100 watt panel. Now we also had amazing conditions today, but the Ecoworthy came in at 85.5. That's a significant hit. Now in the past, we just took those two numbers and then that's where we got our percentage but you guys asked to actually start breaking that up here and also asked what's the performance on shaded power. So I did do a small shaded test where I made a little cardboard leaf in the lower right hand corner and I blocked a couple of the cells on each panel. Right here you'll see 32 out of 90. So for that test, the Renogy was producing 90 watts, then I shaded it and it only produced 32. So it took a massive hit. The Ecoworthy was producing 81 watts at that time. I shaded it, same size leaf, and it produced 42. So the Ecoworthy actually did better in the shaded test. Now the metrics you'd wanna look at when you're sizing out a system, especially if you have like an RV application and that roof is a limited amount of area. So we took average power per square foot from our actual testing data, not from any advertised power, but what are we actually testing? And we're, we can see from the Thunderbolt and the Rich Solar, we are at 13.3 and 14.1, but the Renogy did great. So it was up at about 15.9, and the Ecoworthy did well as uh, compared to our last two at 14.9. So Renogy does have the advantage here, and you're gonna get the most out of that square footage when it comes to the Renogy panel compared to the other three that we tested. Now, what about price? Maybe price sensitive. Maybe what you're doing, you gotta really keep that price down. That's where you'd wanna look at this column and that's gonna be average price for the power that you produced. And here you can see the Thunderbolt, although the Thunderbolt does really well and produces a lot of power, it also costs a lot and it comes with SAE connectors. One thing I didn't mention, you can actually hit this plus sign over here and expand out to get additional details on each of these panels. What is my width? length, overall area, we're using that area, right, to do our calculations, weight, VOC, ISC, uh, lead wire length, how long are those wires so you know, and then what kind of connectors do they have? So I just take that and I put it out of the way so we can actually see the results. So back here, here's your power, or here's your price for the power, right? So it's a dollar seventeen, and I do need to, I'll change those units, it's dollar seventeen per watt, that is the label here for a Thunderbolt, and 108 for a rich solar. You want it low, you want it as low as possible in terms of getting bang for your buck when it comes to these panels. Renogy, very respectable at a 0.86, but because Ecoworthy is so low on their pricing, and you'll that link right over here in the table or the link in the description, you'll see they actually offer good prices all the time, and every once in a while they have a price all the way down to $50 for the 100 watt panel. So you'll see they're all the way down at 0.73, which is best in class thus far for the four panels we've tested. So don't forget, you can download this sheet, why that would be valuable if you're watching this 12 months or 24 months in the future, maybe that average pricing or price has changed. You could download this, you could go ahead, click all these links, get your updated pricing, and you enter it in that cell, and then you're gonna update your fields over here to give you that benchmark where you can compare them side by side. Now, if you're just getting started in solar and you need a little help on wiring, series wiring, parallel, and then when would you do series parallel? You can check out this video right here, and I'll walk you through all three use cases so you can apply that to your own project. And then if you need to actually land that into a portable power station, which is a very common application, you can check out this video right here and we'll try to get the maximum solar input power into our EcoFlow portable power station. 
So thanks for joining this video. Don't forget to let me know your feedback down in the comments and we'll catch you on the next video. Take care.